Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton and I've been the AV Forums editor since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified THX and ISF calibrator with over 17 years of experience. In today's video, we're looking at the LG E9 4K OLED TV. If you like our reviews and want to see more of them while supporting our channel, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload new video content. Also, don't forget to check out the TV forums at Europe's largest AV community on AV forums to see what owners of this TV think about it after normal use in their homes. Also, don't forget to check out the full written review of the E9 on avforums.com. The LG E9 sits above the C9 in the 2019 range and features the new second generation Alpha 9 processor, which adds new AI features for picture and sound quality. It also features HLG and HDR10 static metadata with Dolby Vision dynamic metadata HDR systems, but there's no HDR10+. WebOS is still one of the best smart TV systems on the market and LG has gone for future-proofing the E9 with the addition of HDMI 2.1 as well as adding a menu place for smooth gradation and Dynamic Tone Mapping Pro for improved HDR10 performance. So, can the LG E9 offer enough of a difference in design and performance to justify the price increase over the excellent C9? The E9 uses the picture on glass design which extends under the panel at the front to create a see-through stand. To the right side of this glass area is the LG OLED logo and just above it is the speaker strip. The edge of the panel has the glass design behind the actual panel area which is a unique design cue. At the rear is a large counterweight stand with a mirror finish to the side seen through the glass front stand which gives the impression that the TV is floating on your TV unit. The rear stand also has cable management to route power and other cables, hiding them under a plastic cover. To the rear right are the connections when looking from the rear and consist of sideways and rearward facing slots. Sideways we have a CI slot and three HDMI 2.1 inputs with EARC on HDMI 2 and a USB port. Rearward we have the fourth HDMI 2.1 slot, two USB ports and antennas for RF and satellite. We also have a 3.5mm audio out, a digital audio out and an ethernet port. The remote control is the familiar black plastic LG Magic remote which fits neatly in the hand and has all the main keys with an easy thumb reach. It has direct access keys for Netflix and Prime Video with central direction and enter keys and an on-screen pointer which makes it incredibly intuitive to use. As we always do within our reviews, we measure the out-of-the-box picture presets to find those that get as close as possible to the industry standards. The idea is that a TV must get close to these standards in at least one of its picture modes so end users can see content as it was mastered and intended to be seen. Calibration is not always an option for end users, so actually knowing how accurate the out-of-the-box presets are is very important in any honest TV review. We see absolutely no point in assessing and reviewing TVs in only the perfectly calibrated picture modes as this doesn't reflect what the vast majority of buyers will experience with the TV. We don't only focus on the calibrated performance here at AV Forums. Looking at the grayscale results, we can see that this sample of the E9 is very accurate out of the box. It measures in a similar way to other LG OLEDs we've tested, so it should represent what you can buy in store, given there will be some variance in panels and tolerance of components. We have a small excess of green throughout the grayscale track and a small lack of red, but the Delta E errors are well under the visible threshold of 3, so we don't see any errors on screen with actual viewing content. Gamma is tracking reasonably well, but with slight darkening at 10% stimulus, which can help crush some detail in the darkest reaches of the image with some content. Moving to the Rec. 709 HD color gamut results, we can see that the E9 is once again accurate to the standards, with just a few small errors seen at some saturation and hue points. But overall, these are again under the visible threshold and unseen with actual viewing content. 
So out of the box, the LG E9 is very accurate to the standards for SDR content. Like all the 2019 LG OLED TVs with the A9 Gen 2 processor, we have full calibration controls as well as the option to use AutoCal by Kalman to calibrate the image. We tried both a manual and AutoCal calibration and ended up with the same results with no issues of a lack of processing power for the corrections made using these controls. We managed to get reference results from our grayscale calibration with all Delta E errors under 0.4 which makes them invisible to the eye in test patterns and viewing content. Gamma is also now tracking correctly and at the correct brightness levels for each stimulus point, so it's no longer contributing to any crash. The Rec. 709 colour gamut results are also excellent with no visible Delta E errors at all and again the results are under 0.5. The graph is not perfectly pretty but it must be remembered that the Delta E errors once invisible are not seen with any content even with perfect looking graphs. <laughs> We measure peak brightness in the most accurate mode to D65 on the LG E9 at just under 700 nits on 1%, 2%, 5% and the industry standard 10% window sizes and 125 nits on a full white window in one continuous measurement cycle. We also point out in all of our reviews you shouldn't just concentrate on the peak brightness numbers on their own as they only tell you a small part of the story when it comes to an HDR10 image. Other factors along with total mapping can also affect the results seen with actual viewing content, especially with features like the new Dynamic Tone Mapping Pro that is incredibly effective at dynamically tone mapping HDR10 content. Also new this year is the ability to enter the exact panel peak brightness and adjust the tone mapping to suit. The EOTF tracking is also very good and followed the standard all the way until roll off just below 700 nits peak brightness. This is also the same for all HDR content types and the grayscale tracking was close to D65 throughout. Moving to the wide colour gamut results and we can see that the LG E9 tracking is also decent and has the familiar magenta hue error in the saturation tracking chart but most points from the 75% and below are there or thereabouts on the graph. This is identical to the C9 results. The E9 is not capable of covering the entire DCI P3 colour gamut which is normal for an OLED screen like this and is also limited in terms of colour volume. We measured BT2020 coverage at 71% XY and 75% UV with P3 at 96% XY and 98% UV. The first question that will no doubt be asked is how close is the C9 and E9 for picture quality? And the honest answer is that they are so similar as to be identical to the eye when side by side and compared both in out of the box and calibrated picture settings. We really couldn't tell them apart when watching the same reference clips we know so well and that we use in every review. Panel uniformity was also near enough identical with the E9 having the same slight banding that our C9 sample had at 5% and completely clean uniformity is seen at all stimulus points with no signs of dirty screen effect or brightness differences from edge to edge of the panel. The differences between these screens were so minimal that we doubt any consumers would be able to tell them apart. So it boils down to the cosmetic differences in materials and design used rather than picture quality. But boy, is that picture quality good. Like the C9, the E9 gets very close to all the major competition in 2019 for image accuracy and quality. Only the GZ2000 and GZ950 from Panasonic manage to look just a little bit more natural when it comes to colour saturation and hues, along with a slightly warmer white tone. But you are really getting down to the smallest differences at this point. Moving to video processing and the E9 again matches the C9 for upscaling performance with no signs of ringing or edge enhancement that shouldn't be there, rather the image looks natural, sharp and detailed. Motion is also very good with true motion switched off and 24 frames per second material is played back without any induced judder or blur being present. You can of course experiment with true motion with video and fast moving sports content but you will quickly find the limits and see artifacts being added along with soap opera effect. 
SDR such as streaming shows and Blu-ray discs look excellent with superb shadows and black detail adding to the image depth and a dynamic range that makes images pop. Skin tones are lifelike and believable with excellent sharpness and detail on show. Colours also look incredibly realistic and for the most part natural, although at times they can appear a little too hot, something the Panasonics handle a little better. But for everything else, the LG E9 offers superb SDR image quality out of the box and calibrated. Moving to HDR, and again we were incredibly impressed with the LG E9. The dynamic range on offer is superb with strong specular highlights sitting next to just above black shadow details within the same scene with ease. There's no blooming or crash scene within the vast majority of content we chose to watch, including some absolute classics on 4K UHD disc. Colours for the most part are natural and well saturated and we didn't see any signs of posterization at any point. We really struggled to find any issues with the image quality on offer and only when you do direct comparisons would you start to see these subtle differences with HDR content on competing sets. The Dynamic Tone Mapping Pro really does a great job of mapping HDR10 content to the LG strength, with Dolby Vision also looking incredibly good. Gaming performance was also identical to the C9 with a lag time of just 12.8 milliseconds, which is one of the lowest available, so you'll have no issues with any gaming on the LG E9. Add to this the technology available with VRR, EARC, ALLM and even G-Sync, and gamers should pay attention to the E9 if you're looking for a future-proofed gaming TV. The design of the E9 also allows it to have a front-firing soundbar that lifts the audio quality on offer. Sound is nice and clear, with a good degree of separation and a nice width to the soundstage. Once again, we have a fantastic OLED TV in the LG E9, which is identical to the C9 model for image quality and also adds in a nice picture on glass design and front firing speaker system. There's no doubt that this TV sits at the same level as the Panasonics for image accuracy in SDR and HDR content with superb dynamic range, black levels and colour reproduction. Out of the box, the picture quality on offer is stunningly accurate, with only the odd instance of black crush getting in the way of a reference performance. The new custom tone curve setting in AutoCal really adds to the HDR10 performance and produces some of the best static metadata HDR seen from an OLED TV this year with excellent tone mapping to get the very best out of HDR10 content. Dolby Vision is also stunning with superb black levels, excellent above black details and lifelike skin tones and colours. It's just a shame that there's no HDR10 Plus available. WebOS remains one of the best OS and smart TV systems available with its fast and stable performance with all applications along with easy to use controls and menus. Gaming is also a strong point on the LG E9 with excellent motion, HDR performance and a lag time of 12.8 milliseconds. Plus, we have all four full HDMI 2.1 ports with 48 gigabits per second, the ability to display higher frame rates up to 120Hz, EARC, dynamic metadata for HDR, auto low latency mode and variable refresh rate. This makes the A9 Gen 2 OLEDs from LG the best all-round TVs for future-proofing image quality and smart TV. The only difference between the LG E9 and the lower level C9 is the design and materials used along with the front firing sound system. In terms of picture quality in our testing, both are more or less identical with SDR and HDR content, so the decision to go with the more expensive E9 will come down to your personal preference in the design and sound options. It is yet another outstanding OLED TV from the 2019 lineup and it comes highly recommended.